Oh, it's just an incredible woman. Just a special person, incredibly committed to whatever he does. When you get to know him, it's difficult not to be a friend and a friend for life. So I've known him for a very long time. He's never disappointed me as he's a true job. He doesn't write to bring people down, he writes to edify, he writes to inform, to educate. He knows what the profession is all about. It's not something that uh, an instrument you use on someone you don't like and you give them back of his This was how journalism started in Nigeria when I first came back from the US. In the 80s and 90s, I had to battle for a resonance was the one of the few that you could trust that if you gave him a story, your story came out, it was the things that you said, not things that were put in your mouth. And that he would ask interesting stories, interesting questions to begin with, that the interviews were interesting. So it's just, they don't make them like that anymore. And I advocate that this book be bought and sent to school because our journalists need to really learn the basics of the profession and how they can come to reach that perspective and have staying power. If you have integrity, if you shine the light on the truth and not abusing your position or your access to the to bring that. So we have a lot to learn from as a journalist, as an entrepreneur, as a Nigerian, as a Nigerian, the man of the people. Okay, Ma, I, if I can remember vividly when you spoke about him getting married, when he took an interview from you the first time and ceased not to record it and you advised him to get married, that means he was deeply, deeply in, like a son or like a brother to you. Yeah. Can you tell us the reason why that has so happened? It's just because he is who he is, because uh, he's someone that I have always admired and much more than that. Yes, he could be my son, he could be a uh, 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 junior. <laughs> brother, which is really how I treat him. Um, Asu knows things about me that Asu, um, Asu respects me. And I feel that respect every time he's on the phone or he's spoken to me. It's not a picture of it. It's not fake. He really respects you as a person and he just respects you women. Those are the qualities that I like about him. A lot of our young people these days don't know how to talk to anybody. I like can pass you up and they can talk to that. Without even saying, excuse me, or I'm sorry. I, I, I blame us parents. We need to go back and teach our children how to respect other people, not just elders, but other people. How to give right of way, how to give people their space. How to allow people to express themselves and, and, and be what they want to be. Um, this is lacking in our education. We talk about it every day. I'm mean, trying to teach. If you brush past me, I will stop and I will call you back and I will say, That's not right. How you should do it is excuse me. And I will move out of your So it's something I've taken upon myself. Almost like that, like a grandmother teaching young people how they can conduct themselves. When you put out respect, you come back. If you don't, you don't get respect. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've done very well because I have these guys in my house. They laugh at me if I can't post something on Instagram. So I have to learn all those things and I do it for myself. And I have seen a lot on social media. Sometimes Facebook, I'm not on Facebook much because people create accounts in my life that are fake and people are online. So there's a lot to grapple with, but you, you go with the flow. This is life as we see it. We're living it on social media. We're using social media for so many things. That's, that's what it is. You take the best out of it, you leave whatever you would like. You don't have to engage in all that men calling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
But I use it to spread my music, to spread my music, to talk about issues that I know are true. I know that people are doing that easy for you. Most children are doing it. Imagine this part of it. Someone like you. You dare not. Hey, my mother's backhand. <laughs> waiting, <laughs> waiting. One look at you and you know you are finished mm -hmm. for that day. And the best thing is to go and find a relative who can come and plead on your behalf. You know, those were the girls and I am missing those things. I used to think, I used to ask God, are you sure this is my mother? <laughs> when I, I had children, I that discipline of being very, very focused on where you're going and being mindful of the people around you to make sure that you're not living a life just by yourself, for yourself. You're living a life with all the gifts and opportunities that God has given you. You're living that life so you can impact because I'm so lucky and so blessed, and I'm so grateful to God for all the things that He has given me and that He has His hand on me. And so, what can I do for a God like that? What does He need from me? The only thing I can do is to be the God that the next person is seeing, is to be that God. Is to be thankful in their minds that they know that God is there. You know, God Himself is not going to come down. It's you that His hands, His feet, His voice can reach out to you. And so I, I, I do it on a daily basis and ask you, what do I do for you? Do? There's nothing that is enough. We, we don't say thank you enough. We don't. We forget what we're complaining. As it's finishing, you haven't even said. Thank you. You're complaining about the other, the next one. They're making no hurry up. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. What have you given me? You know, that's my passion when I wake up. What am I doing for him that would glorify him? I don't always get it wrong, but I do. He understands. He makes me very special. He teaches me to get back to the way he's enjoying it.